All right, so here we go. Hey, everybody. Um, joining a, uh, a friend of mine for uh, another conversation that I, I hope you'll get a lot of value out of. Um, our guest today is Malin Grimes, uh, whom I had met during my uh, teaching at Youngstown State University. And I don't actually recall, how did we meet? It was previous to you doing YBI stuff. It was related Maybe I just, to the NEA grant. That's right. That's what it was. Yeah. So we met, wow, that was what, 2016 um, for the Our Town um, project. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where we met and then kind of hit it off there talking about the City of You branding project. And then I would see you around Bliss Hall because you're a music student. Mm -hmm. And then uh, eventually you kind of migrated over to some other areas that I I was in uh, relative to like YBI and things like that. So, well, thank you for uh, taking the time to talk with me. I really appreciate it. Thank um, you. The, uh, the folks that we're talking to are marketing, um, marketing, communications, and design students, uh, mostly seniors. So um, let's start off with a uh, little bit about, you know, what you're doing now. And then we'll kind of work backwards and then we'll work forwards. So uh, what are you doing now? What, what's your line of work? Where are you at? So again, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to uh, be a part of this next um, leg in everyone's journey and I wish you luck. And um, just a little bit about me, my current position I've had for about two and a half years. It's with a company called called Reach, and it's a very small software company. We're distributed around the world, and we serve the um, intermodal and trucking industry. And we initially started serving the intermodal community, which is um, containers and tractor trailers uh, moving around the uh, United States, and we're going into um, more so North America now and expanding worldwide. But our product serves truckers, when they experience breakdowns. Um, there are a lot of products out there that help trucking companies get between points A and B, but we help when something happens between A and B. And we help with other services such as um, inspection reports and pre preventative maintenance, as well as um, telematics. So there are a lot of really exciting things happening in the transportation industry. And I got the job that I have now through a business incubator in Youngstown is, um, excuse me, as RJ mentioned, it's called um, the Youngstown Business Incubator and it houses businesses with um, specializations in software and additive manufacturing. And being a software company, I had um, a fellowship that was, I think, nine months. And as a marketing student, I helped these local businesses, these local startups with projects pretty far ranging within the marketing realm between SEO work, helping with website, and I had no prior experience with building websites and um, low code format. So um, that was a really good way to dive in head first, as well as meet some pretty awesome uh, community members who were making some pretty interesting endeavors. And um, the company that I'm currently with, I had, it was my, I think my fourth project through the YBI. And the summer of 2017, I was hired, and they haven't been able to get rid of me. <laughs> that's, that's my story so far. That's great. And so I, I really like your story because you're not too far removed from undergraduate. Um, and uh, so, like you said, you dove in head first. And, you know, what I especially like about your story is that you were, were you a business major? You were music, right? I studied, it's, a, it's an interesting question. I got a degree in marketing management. Okay. I also built a program for arts administration. So um, I spent a lot of time at the music school. Um, you just happen to be a really great musician. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what it is. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Um, but it was a lot of fun because I was able to integrate what I was learning at the business school. Mm -hmm. And I, one of my favorite moments in undergrad was a recital. I was actually in Included with the City of You campaign, um, it's a requirement of music students to have their own solo recital. But I did it at a um, a student exhibit. Mm -hmm. throughout, it was toward the end of the semester, and it was this museum. And I had friends play throughout the gallery before. Um, it was just a really nice moment of community. So 
organizations. Um, I could have some uh, background in, in nonprofit leadership too. So you've got this, this arts background, music background, marketing background, and now you're marketing a service that uh, serves the trucking industry. It's kind of an interesting path. Like, did you ever think you'd be doing that? No. And I, I surprise myself, honestly, every day with that thought. And it's so exciting to me because I think the most – motivating factor is the team I work with. Um, my boss and I especially get along incredibly well. Um, they're very open lines of communication and it's it's an interesting place to be in because our team is completely remote. And I've actually only met, I think, five people in person of our 25 to 30 member team and that includes our developers. And we're wow. distributed, those people alone are distributed across the United States. But um, it's the honest communication that we have and i think it starts with um, my boss who founded the company through the ybi um, his dedication to the solutions that we solve as well as um, the customers that we've gained over time i jumped in about um two and a half years after the company was founded and we've grown a lot since then, even with the services that we offer um, and our customer base has as well. But it's um, really been a matter of the strength of the team itself and the ingenuity of the people that I'm working with, no matter if we've met in person a few times or none at all. Right. As the, the dedication to our customers, um, because we're a fairly young company, our customers have been pretty engaged with helping improve the software itself and those lines of communication are pretty open and honest as well. Uh, so I, I thank you for that. And you paint such a, a really comprehensive picture of, of this company. And I think what is going to be of real interest to, to my students is the fact that you're still in, you're in that startup culture. You're in the startup world. The, the company is young. Um, you're in the in the ground floor of it, essentially. And over time, it's growing. And can you talk about what it's like be working for a startup? And then, you know, your ideological sort of investment in it. Like, do you want to stay with them in the long term? Uh, well, you don't have to answer that. But like, if you do, what does that look like? Where do you want to take the company from its startup roots? So that's a really interesting question because right now um, we are in the transition phase between a startup and we're not nowhere near a corporation itself mm -hmm. with the large booming the, um, the idea of that. But we are definitely at a point that we're scaling right now, which is scary. <laughs> and we are hiring very quickly. And there's a phrase that I learned last year about not getting your head over your ski tips. And oh, okay. <laughs> I've thought about that a lot in terms of balancing our resources with what our customers demand. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's positive demand. Um, I think about push and pull factors a lot. But these customers are helping us wanting the software to grow to accommodate their needs and their own markets because we serve b2b we're in a b2b product right and um it's very tempting to want to say okay we'll hire more developers just to get this thing done but that's not always the um the smartest route um or the most thoughtful sure so what i've observed um from my boss and um there's another gentleman who helped to build the software itself they are both their co-founders what i've learned from watching them and what i've um, kind of adopted in my own behavior and even how i t um, communicate with our team is to make each decision very intentionally it doesn't have to be on somebody else's timeline of course there are appropriate deadlines to set for um, legal reasons or what have you that's right. not always the case but most of the time you're able to um, approach the scaling challenges at the pace that works for the company and that has everyone on board with devoting the um, for example the proper developer to excuse me the appropriate project and how many we need and to take to really take the time to assess those needs rather than to rush into solution mode right and so 
I love the fact that you're really putting an emphasis on listening to your customer base. Um, are you the chief listener uh, through your through your position in, in reach? Or can you talk a little bit about what you do on the day to day and especially how you're listening to your customers? Sure. So a lot of us, actually most of the team, I'm trying to think how big we are. I'll, I'll, we'll go with 25, honestly, because we're hiring so frequently. Most of the developers still communicate directly with the customer. Um, a lot of the time that's with their own IT teams, okay. but they have that direct line of communication. Um, and my, to answer your question more directly, my day is spent, um, I just, even just today, I had a series of stand-up sessions with one large customer and they have a series of their own customers. I work directly with them and I communicate at a high level where projects are from uh, the development pipeline. And if okay. I receive requests, um, that's a large part of my day, not only the day, but just um, the position that I hold within, uh, it's kind of between leader, it's mostly within the leadership business role, but also feeding these items to the development team, engaging where we're at, what does this look like, what are the estimates, um, is this feasible to get this done for the customer? Sure. Things like that to understand the product at a deeper level. So um, I really enjoy that communication process between understanding the product at a deeper level and then passing that on to the customer in business terms and exactly fitting in, or not all the time exactly, but fitting in where those needs meet. And if they don't, we either work with the customer um, to develop exactly what they're looking for and to scope that right. out. Um, or um, take that to the to the development team and then see what's feasible. But um, yeah, a lot of my time, I'm trying to, <laughs> to round back to your question. A lot of my time is spent listening. I try to focus on that. And I think at an interpersonal level, there are a lot of things, um, even just to do one-on-one, -on -one, to understand where someone's coming from. And um, a lot of the time I simulate the issues that a person is facing, whether it's with the software itself or to um, gain a deeper understanding of the business setting before, again, going jumping into that solution. Mode. Sure. So you're kind of putting yourself in their shoes and trying to, you know, help diagnose some of the challenges that they're having and then applying that to not just a, a marketing aspect, but also kind of an operations one. Mm -hmm. um, so that you can help push the product forward and help it evolve. And in so doing, um, provide better, meaningful information to your development teams. So it sounds to me like you're kind of a linchpin in the company. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's my interpretation. And I didn't really have any sort of understanding of what you did previously. So um, keeping that in mind, like, at your age, being fresh, relatively fresh out of school, you've been there for a couple of years, like you said, but like, um, how does it feel to be so integral to the success of this company, to a startup? Uh, do, you, do you like operating in this space enough to spin off your own company, or do you want to try to just continue to level this one up as much as you can? Uh, well, thank you for the compliments. And I... Um... I never, I actually applied to the fellowship through the YBI, honestly, within, I think it had an hour left that they were accepting submissions. Wow. So, okay. Well, I really don't want this entrepreneurial environment and I never thought of starting anything myself. Um, and I'm not sure what that would be right now. I really appreciate the transportation sector just because they're especially from a technological perspective it's mm -hmm. there's a lot of it that's really ahead but trucking itself is a little bit behind and there's a lot to be done right and we're at the forefront of a lot of things going on and we have a lot of really um, viable partners um, and then through I'm a part-time MBA student at NYU Stern and um, thinking long term I think that um, there will be some really interesting opportunities to come either directly or indirectly through the people I'll meet. And I'm not even sure yet. I started a month ago, so <laughs> we will we'll see. But um, I would like to be with this 
company for again as as long as they'll have me because their um, the growth is happening very quickly, and um, there are a lot of really exciting things in the industry itself. So. Well, yeah, I mean, why leave? If, if there's active growth, there's a ton of potential to innovate um, and to be one of the innovators in that space. You know, it's like you could be uh, a big fish in a small pond almost if, based on what you're saying with the, the, the slow evolution of the trucking industry. Um, there's a lot to be done there. And that's actually exciting. So... Um, you'll do great there, no doubt about that. But it also, with facing that opportunity, you know, why spin off your own company or do your own thing when there's so much to be done here? I feel like a lot of students that, that I have, and maybe you can speak to this, you know, enter the field and are just like, you know, I wanna get an entry level job or I, I just need to break in, do the work, pay my dues, and then start to explore. Whereas with your sort of career trajectory, you jumped in and now you're helping innovation um, at a rapid clip and you're still relatively young into your career. So can you imagine your career if it were a little bit different and you just, you didn't have these opportunities to innovate? So I think about, um, I actually was thinking about that a little bit today because I have some friends uh, working for example um, agencies and kind of taking the path that you described mm -hmm. and one thing I notice if they are unhappy that it comes down to the co company culture and just with with whom I've talked with and um, what little I've gathered but I would say if that is the approach you would like to take if Let's say you have long-term goals identified, but not quite sure what to do immediately, and you find a position that you qualify for, um, and you have, plan again, future plans. I would be selective to a reasonable degree on the culture that you're um, investing in, because they'll, at least they should be investing in you in that way. Um, and that is one of, I think, the unique factors about um, the position I'm in, given that it is a small company and um, I joined the team at an interesting point at, uh, right before we started to scale up. But um, the reason why I say I'm not looking to jump anywhere quickly is because I'm very happy with how I'm communicated with and I think the most important thing is that I feel trusted mm -hmm. and I feel that the responsibility bestowed upon me is intentional and it's um, with confidence that um, I'll be challenged and I'll grow a little yeah. bit. But I like, to, so I talk with my hands. So I'll just try to. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I think about um, comfort zones a lot, kind of like yeah. this. Let's say it's like this circle. And yeah. You said, um, for the example, if I want to pay my dues, it would be within here, and that sure. would, um, that would be great. And there would be opportunities to grow a little bit, maybe push past it. Mm -hmm. If you go a little bit beyond the sphere, then that's good. Then the sphere becomes wider, and you grow. Yeah. But if you're immediately shot out here, then that's it's too much pressure, and you'll recoil, and you won't yeah. want to be pushed. Um, and everyone has different boundaries of what that looks like. Right. But um, I think that's something to be wary for as well, to feel um, appropriately challenged and to want to, to have that um, factor of being pushed by the people you're hired by, but also um, to, be, to so be selective of the culture and the means that um, makes sense for where you're at. Yeah. Keeping in mind where you want to be. Hopefully that's I, no, no, no I, I think what you're, that was such a great way to put, uh, to put it, because I think what you're talking about is compatibility, and there's also a little bit of risk there. So like in this startup culture, in this startup that you're in, like you said, they've, they've placed a lot of responsibility and trust in your capabilities and your talents, and that makes you grow exponentially faster because there's more on the line. You know, it's not like, you know, if, if you fail at your job, it's not like the company will still be there. It could be like, yeah, a lot of people 
will go belly up. Like the, the company will dissolve and you'll lose, your coworkers will lose their jobs and they need to move on. There's a fair amount of pressure, but based on what you said, like your, your, your bosses are giving you the, the room to grow into that position and accept that responsibility and I think maybe what they really want from you is to say like, yes, I say yes to that experience and you grow as a result. So you may find like relative to your circular sort of a diagram example, you might exceed, you might shoot outside to the periphery and other things may not interest you as, as a result. Like why go through that entry level process and, you know, try to, you know, uh, make a position for yourself in an established company when you can make something entirely on your own merits defined in a way that you prefer. Um, and if you know you have what it takes to, to see that type of work through, then you'll be all the better for it. So I, I give you a lot of kudos on, on knowing what your limits are, what your talents are, and just exactly where you want to take them because so many students are not ready or even recognize that um, right around graduation. Thank you. And I think that's a really good point that you make to um, be able to um, see that in the people who you're hiring or who has hired you. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think um, I'm a big believer, actually I know, I'm a big believer of being hired, or when you're hired, you are, um, those people know the responsibility that they're giving you, and they should trust you, and if they don't trust you, then you should not be given the role that you have been, so given those parameters, um, yeah, it, it's worthwhile to communicate, to, I don't know if I like the aphorism, over-communicate, but to ask questions and to, um, yeah, to work within the bounds that you're given, but also know that um, the responsibility bestowed upon you is, is that. So. Yeah, no, that absolutely does. Um, and I like the fact that like your, your position and the responsibilities that you have require a certain amount of curiosity um, a need to investigate and observe and take what you're understanding there and, you know, mold and shape that into not just how you work, but also how others work and ultimately what your product is and how people use it. So it's kind of like this all encompassing sort of thing. Um, we're running short on time. So I wanted to, to get this out there. Um, I'm sure some of my students will have an interest in contacting you because a lot of them place a, a lot of value and interest in disruptive uh, products and uh, disrupting markets and industries, um, which I feel like that's something that REACH is doing and is evolving and uh, innovating in the transportation space. How can uh, my students contact you and how can they learn more about REACH? So my LinkedIn profile is a good place to connect. Um, I'd be happy to accept your invitation. And my name is Madeline Grimes. And if you can't find me that way, it's, I believe, the tail on the, um, the LinkedIn profile. Forgive me if that's the incorrect term, but it's Madeline Grimes 4, uh, the number 4. And then my email address, my work email is madeline at reach24.net and I'd be happy to connect and answer any questions that you might have. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. Hopefully we can do this again relatively soon when I don't have like a child knocking on my door wanting to play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Madeline. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much.